Now, Russia has just announced that it will, it will begin mass vaccinations in Russia with the Sputnik V vaccine, which, as you said, is in the third phase of clinical trials currently on India as well. For more on the whole global vaccine scenario, on a day that we've got the world's first authorized vaccine, joining me is Dr. Jerome Kim, Director General of the International Vaccine Institute. Uh, Dr. Kim, first, how excited are you about the news that, uh, well, we've got an authorized vaccine which will uh, roll out next week in the United Kingdom? So I think it's, it's, it's important information. I mean, for the last two weeks, we've been hearing about a successful uh, vaccine trial after a successful vaccine trial. You know, um, we heard first from Pfizer. Um, now we know that it's 95% efficacious um, over the course of two months. So we have data on safety and efficacy up to two months. Now, theoretically, we would want vaccines to be safe and efficacious for much longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all of these vaccine data are limited by the fact that we've only really accumulated two months worth of experience. Will it be different at six months? Probably not, although we might expect vaccine efficacy to drop a little bit. But again, we just don't know. Um, so I think it's, it's excitement, but tempered by the fact that, that there are still many unknowns about these vaccines. Right, and, you know... Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a really important point, Dr. Kim, because if you like, trace it back, if you look at it, it's now been about uh, almost uh, just over a year since this uh, new virus first emerged. We've now got a vaccine when normally vaccines take up to 10 years is seen as the kind of gold standard for testing. Here we're developing vaccines in about 10 months. So that, of course, is a question, as you pointed out, that we don't know the impact after six months. Also, the fact that this is the first messenger RNA vaccine to be used in humans. Is that something that uh, you'd like to look at more? What exactly is an mRNA vaccine for a layperson? Yes, so um, so it is uh, it is not necessarily the first one tested in humans, mm -hmm. but it is the first one given emergency use approval. Now, I think it's also important to distinguish between uh, final approval, licensure, uh, and emergency use. So emergency use is a special, special designation, for instance, that the FDA, US FDA uses. Mm -hmm. um, that allows a vaccine to be used before it is formally um, licensed by the FDA, uh, which will take additional data and additional information on efficacy and safety. So what we have right now is permission to proceed with vaccination with a vaccine that is shown very positive results, but isn't necessarily, um, doesn't have the data set necessary for final approval. Mm -hmm. And so that that's an important uh, characteristic. So I think it's great that they're rolling it out now in the UK and and, um, I guess after a certain point, maybe December 15th in the United States, they'll start vaccination also. Um, but as your other speakers pointed out, this may not be a vaccine that is universally, universally applicable. Mm -hmm. For instance, the other RNA vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, can be stored at two to eight degrees for a period of 30 days, mm -hmm. which actually is a little more flexible in terms of its ability to be used in settings uh, like in India, um, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, but India has other options as well. And I think those are very important. Now, RNA vaccines. Um, remember from uh, biology class, I guess, that uh, we start with our genetic information. That's called DNA. Mm -hmm. DNA, mm -hmm. is, um, DNA is eventually made into proteins, which eventually become you know, the viruses that, um, that we develop vaccines against. The intermediate state to get from the DNA to the protein requires a chemical called RNA. So DNA, then RNA is a messenger mm -hmm. that takes the message to the rest of the cell that tells it to make protein. And the RNA vaccines use uh, the RNA messenger mm -hmm. uh, in order to directly make proteins that the body will respond to um, uh, during the vaccination. And so it's very efficient. There are also vaccines uh, that are being tested that are DNA vaccines and a large number of vaccines now that are, we may actually begin to start to see um, announcements uh, in the next month or two mm -hmm. from protein based vaccines. And of course, companies like Barad or Sinopharm have whole inactivated virus vaccines, which are another um, class of vaccines. It's an older technology. It's quite robust. We have lots of different vaccines that we use in that fact, are made from whole and activated virus. Interestingly, so, Dr. Kim, you know, yes, you know, as you pointed out, that we're going to see this kind of race of vaccine announcements uh, likely to come from country after country. Russia has just announced that uh, they are going ahead with mass vaccinations uh, next week. Also, we had some questions being raised about, say, uh, trials of, say, an AstraZeneca vaccine and uh, safety concerns. 
which are the vaccines that you think have been transparent, uh, would satisfy all safety questions at this point, and which are the vaccines that you are really optimistic about at this point? Do you agree with we don't, we haven't heard much of the China vaccine at all so far, and uh, international peer rev review trials at all for Russia and China? And so um, it, it's quite a complicated situation, um, and it's interesting that you asked that question, because so far, all we have to go on are press releases. Mm -hmm. This is not the kind of scientific information that, you know, um, some of the scientists at uh, ICMR, for instance, could go through, get their teeth in to really understand and, and really come to a conclusion. What we have are statements from uh, vaccine manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to be important. And this is why I think the US FDA is scheduled a meeting, is going over the data now, and on the, I think the 10th of December, we'll have a meeting to formally review um, you know, the first of the application. Right. So, um, and it's very important because one of the things about vaccines, you know, vaccines are given to healthy people to keep them healthy. Mm -hmm. So it's a different bar compared to a drug, which is given to someone who's sick to make them better. Exactly. And one of the things that we have to be able to assure the population is mm -hmm. that these vaccines have been shown, proven to be safe and effective. And so far, no one has actually presented the data. Now, That's I think we would argue that mm -hmm. the, the companies that are familiar with, uh, you know, the the way we conduct in the West, conduct mm -hmm. uh, good uh, clinical practices, the way we conduct clinical trials is very standardized. And so the same standards apply in India that apply in the United States that apply in, in Europe. And, and those, those, are, those are the standards we're familiar with. The right. Chinese have a very similar right. standard um, adapted for China, um, but so it's just a little more difficult for us to know exactly what's going on. So Absolutely. I think that's why um, other experts are a concern. I mean, no, we, I think we, don't, we don't have information. Absolutely. So press release science and uh, I think vaccine nationalism are two key factors that we need to look out for. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Kim, uh, for joining me and I think uh, giving your perspective on today's big announcement.